This video was brought to you by Incogni. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. Picture this, a phone that you don't have to charge for days, or a laptop that can last a week without recharging. Well, that kind of thing is on the cards with what we're about to talk about in this episode. Walt De Heer may look like your average professor, but he and his team have been working for 10 years to flip the world of computing on its head. With their recent breakthrough at Georgia Tech University, we could see computers and phones that are up to 10 times faster operating in the realm of terahertz. Not only that, but they'd use less power and produce less heat. His team's findings were published in the journal Nature. People knew about graphene. It had been heavily studied in many different disciplines and uh, surface scientists knew about it, chemists knew about it, but nobody had actually thought that this stuff might be good for electronics. And so in 2001, uh, we basically came to the idea that maybe graphene could be used for electronics, and that's how the whole story started, really. So just a heads up, this video may be a bit more technical than normal, but I did just find it fascinating. So in this quick episode, let's check out how they did it and what this means for us and technology as a whole. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Today, semiconductors, specifically the element silicon, powers our world. In the 1950s, very clever scientists figured out how to manipulate silicon to behave like tiny switches. You could join thousands of them together and program them to do things. We call this a computer. Over time, our whole modern world has been built on these tiny little silicon switches. We call these tiny switches transistors, and humans have made incredible progress with silicon transistors. Just look at Moore's law, which states that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles every two years. Or even better yet, just look at the devices around you. From your car, to your fridge, computer, phone, and TV, they're everywhere. Over the past 70 years, the only thing that we really did was pack these transistors into ever tighter spaces to give us more processing power. But the thing is, we're now just reaching the limits of silicon transistors in terms of speed, heat generation, and miniaturization. But what if we could make transistors even better, 10 times better? Enter graphene. Silicon carbide, it's a crystal made of silicon and carbon atoms. If you heat the silicon carbide up, the silicon evaporates and what's left over is the carbon. So all these carbon molecule atoms are sitting on that surface and then they simply connect together to make this uh, sheet of graphene. I've talked about graphene a few times on the channel, but in summary, it's a 2D material made from a uniform honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms, one layer thick. Its structure allows electrons to move through it with minimal resistance. And since an electrical current is just electrons, this property makes graphene one of the most conductive materials known to man. It's also strong, light, and basically overall a wonder material. The only problem was that up until 10 years ago, it was pretty hard to make in a cost-effective way. But fortunately, growing graphene on silicon carbide, synthesizing it via chemical vapor deposition, and liquid phase electromechanical exfoliation were the three graphene manufacturing breakthroughs that made it viable in the last decade. And after that, the applications came through, one of the most famous of which was a graphene charging bank from Electjet. It could charge a massive 10,000 milliamp hours in 30 minutes, five times faster than the competition. Reviewers around the world were stunned when it came out back in 2021. It also boasted five times as many charge cycles as a regular lithium ion battery. Okay, so you know graphene is cool and it has its applications, but as a transistor, that makes no sense. For the technically inclined, you might see that something doesn't add up straight away. As mentioned, graphene is one of the best, most efficient, and most rapid conductors known to man. But a traditional transistor is a semiconductor. That means it's not quite a conductor or an insulator, but somewhere in between. A transistor needs to fit the class of being a semiconductor, and that's because this in-between property that semiconductors have allows them to be manipulated to turn on and off, like a switch. In other words, it has to change between conducting and insulation. So that's the major problem for a graphene transistor. Its conductivity can never be switched off. And well, that would make a pretty lousy switch. The thing is, there's actually a workaround to this called band gap engineering. And this is where the genius comes in. But first, we need to understand what a band gap is. Now I found this next part pretty interesting. So we all know that materials are made of atoms, which have a nucleus and electrons that move around it. 
Electrons can only be in certain discrete layers, or shells, above the nucleus, which we can call bands. Now imagine a ladder. Think about the steps of the ladder as different electron shells around an atom's nucleus in a given material. The lower steps are what we call the valence band. This band is where electrons reside normally. Electrons are comfortable here, and they don't want to leave. Now the upper steps belong to the conduction band. At this level, conduction of electricity easily occurs when the electrons are here, because they can just fly off. Now, imagine a gap between the two sections of the ladder. This gap represents the band gap. In an inch later, this gap is relatively wide, so it takes a lot of effort for the electrons to get to the conduction band, so the material doesn't conduct electricity well. In contrast, in a semiconductor, the band gap is narrower compared to an insulator. Electrons can climb up, but with some external energy required. This allows semiconductors to conduct electricity under certain conditions. In metals, there's effectively no band gap. Electrons are pretty much having a party and can move freely throughout the material. And this is why metals are good conductors of electricity. Graphene is a strange case because it conducts electricity better than anything else, but it's not a metal. So scientists wanted to take advantage of the high conducting benefit of graphene, but also wanted to be able to make it stop conducting on command. If this could be done, it would make for an amazing new kind of transistor. Since 2008, scientists have been trying to use band gap engineering to make graphene behave like a semiconductor. They all gave it a good go, but just couldn't get the thing to work. The resulting transistors performed poorly and were useless. Walt and the researchers perfected an existing manufacturing technique and managed to achieve a high quality band gap in graphene for the very first time. Here's how it worked. The method involves heating silicon carbide in an argon-filled quartz tube. Inside the tube is two silicon carbide layers shown in green. A high frequency AC current is run through a copper coil around the quartz tube and this heats the layers to 1000 degrees Celsius through induction. The heat causes the silicon, which is the white circles, to evaporate and, quote, leave behind a carbon-rich surface that forms into graphene, end quote. And that's shown in black. The high frequency of the heating coil ensures even and robust graphene deposits. The whole process is efficient, with the necessary materials like silicon carbide and quartz tubes being relatively inexpensive. The components for the whole setup cost $20. The scientists created individual transistors that when measured and tested, outperformed current silicon chips in speed. They were also successful in producing larger, robust semiconductor wafers. Here's a quote from De Heer, quote, Our research is distinct from other approaches because we have produced large areas of semiconducting SEC on a deficit-free, atomically flat silicon carbide terraces. Silicon carbide is hardly developed, readily available electronic material that is fully compatible with conventional microelectronics processing methods." End quote. So if all of that went over your head, what does this all mean? What's the bigger picture? Number one, the creation of semiconducting graphene. This most recent paper, we started to figure out how to turn graphene into a semiconductor because natural graphene is not a semiconductor. The Georgia Tech team created graphene with a band gap, meaning that this wonder material is finally applicable to microelectronics. Number two, better computers. The good thing about graphene is not only can you make things smaller and faster and uh, with less heat dissipation, you're actually using properties of electrons that are not accessible in silicon. So this is really a paradigm shift. It's a different way of doing electronics. The graphene semiconductor that was created had very high electron mobility, and this is crucial for high frequency, terahertz range electronics. And for context, our chips today operate in the gigahertz range. Higher electron mobility allows for faster switching of transistors, which is essential for improving the speed and efficiency of electronic devices. Imagine your laptop or phone lasting for days at a time while being five times faster. Number three, simple and cost-effective methods. This method involves standard equipment and relatively inexpensive materials. It's also compatible with conventional chip fabrication methods. And this compatibility is essential for integrating into existing manufacturing processes. That means it's scalable and economically feasible for broader adoption in the semiconductor industry. And that's something that's pretty rare for such research breakthroughs. Number four, the potential for quantum computing applications. 
The team also noted that there's a potential for using this high mobility graphene in quantum computing. The quantum mechanical wave properties of electrons in graphene is much more pronounced at low temperatures versus silicon. And this could lead to new types of quantum devices and computing methods. And this represents a paradigm shift from traditional silicon-based electronics. So with all of that being said, there is one downside that I haven't seen reported anywhere else when researching this. The band gap for this graphene method is 0.6 electron volts, and this is versus 1.1 electron volts typical in silicon. So let me break down what that means. While a smaller band gap could be beneficial for applications such as a new kind of solar panel, a CPU is another case. If we use this graphene semiconductor as is in a CPU, the smaller band gap could lead to current leakage. And this is when a device still leaks a little bit of current when it's supposed to be in its off state. This could increase power consumption and heat generation, undoing some of that wonder that graphene had in the first place. But that being said, it's not a huge deal at this stage, and I'm sure that with time, the band gap number will improve as they make refinements to the process. If there's no more hiccups along the way, this event is massive and could change the field of computing as we know it. I wish the team all the best. Before we continue, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, Incogni. You've probably noticed recently that you're getting more scam calls, text messages, and various phishing attempts. So why does this happen? Well, the main reason is that your personal information is being sold online without you even knowing it. This information can be used to send unsolicited scams and advertisements. They can even sell your browsing habits and even commit identity theft. This is where today's sponsor, Incogni, can help. They can delete your information from the records of data brokers on your behalf. Simply just create an account, then Incogni can contact the data brokers, and then you can sit back, relax, and let them take care of the rest, complete with updates on how the task is going. So to protect yourself online, use the code COLDFUSION in the link below to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Go to incogni.com slash coldfusion to get started. Thanks to Incogni for supporting the channel. Okay, now back to the video many many things that that are possible with graphene that are not possible with silicon you can connect it to biological molecules for example you can interface it with something called molecular electronics a uh, whole bunch of stuff like that so i think we're looking at a whole new landscape opening up in electronics okay so that's the story of the world's first silicon graphene semiconductor if you did like that feel free to subscribe there's plenty of other interesting stuff on this channel on science technology and business my name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.